Hi guys, it's Sarah from Book Nerds and Fan Girls, and today I'll be reviewing Looking for Alaska by John Green. Looking for Alaska tells the story of Miles. Miles, as he transfers from his public school in Florida to attend the private school in Alabama, where he meets Alaska Young, a girl he is rather interested in interested and wants to know everything about and things escalate from there but then something happens to Alaska and Miles finds it upon himself to find out if it was purely accidental or there was something more to the story than what it seems seems now going into this book this book because it is spoiler territory. I will be giving my rating for this book first and then Cliff noting the spoiler warning over here. Over here. So if you have not read Looking for Alaska yet, I suggest reading it. It's a really great book. Book. It's also if you're looking for a banned book to read. To read because I always love reading banned books and seeing why they were banned. I did it with Crank by Ellen Hawkins. Ellen Hawkins, and I love Ellen Hawkins books. And the, actually, in my hometown, Ellen Hawkins books are actually banned from the library because of their subject matter. Matter because there's more darker themes going, and it seems like most of the books they ban, they seem banned because they're about darker themes, or they're too sexual, but I find it really important nowadays that we have to have books like this in our libraries, because we're not kids anymore, and we know what's up with our society, Society, and we can't just put on rose-colored glasses and pretend things like this don't happen, don't happen. I actually find these books rather educational. A lot of people don't. That's fine. That's cool. That's cool, it's just not really my style to ban any book, and I wish a lot of books weren't banned from places just because of their subject matter. So, going on to my rating, I gave Looking for Alaska a 8.5 out of 10 stars. It was a really excellent read. Read, probably one of my second favorite novels this year that I've read, besides The Hate You Give. The Hate You Give, if you haven't read it, also check that out out. Really great story that takes you out of your element. Element. This one, Looking for Alaska, was more in my element. I didn't have to take myself out of my element because there's a lot of situations in Looking for Alaska that I could relate to. Relate to, and I just, I loved it so much. Go read it. Just, it's worth it. It's a little slow-paced at first, but then it picks up toward the midway point, and you really have to stick with it to the midway point. Because that's when all the seriousness starts to happen. And it goes from a lighthearted book to something much deeper. And I just... Perfect. 8.5 out of 10 stars. Go read it. And I will see you guys after you read it for my spoiler review. Bye, non-spoilery people. Bye. Okay, so as for my spoiler reviews, I usually start with reviewing the characters first thing what I do and don't like about the characters. So I'm going to start off with the eagle. Eagle, which is basically their dean of their school. School. I liked how strict the eagle was. I liked how he actually is a present adult in this book. This book and the high school kids just aren't around doing, running around doing wild shenanigans. There's usually a consequence to them doing everything. He catches them smoking. Consequence. Consequence. He Catches them drinking. Consequence. Consequence. There's always a consequence for these kids' actions. Bad actions. And I totally admire him for that. That being said, I don't know how he didn't figure out with Miles and his groups of friends that kept on doing the firework thing. thing. But besides that, I think the eagle is actually the only one I don't have a complaint about. Uh, there's one... Guy, yeah, he was the teacher. Next uh, character we're gonna discuss is the teacher in Looking for Alaska. I don't know what his name is. It's the religion teacher. Teacher, I like how his class is incorporating religion into everyday society. 
is that he's out really shoving religion down people's throats, and I just, it's, it's cool, it was a cool concept, I've never really attended a religion class, nor will I ever, because religion isn't a thing that really fascinates me, fascinates me, as some of you may not know, I'm non-denominational, so I don't really care about religion, religion, it's there, I get people have their faith, but I think I'd rather have faith in God about the confines of a church of a church and I'm not bashing people who do do that it's just it's just the way I am I am and I have gone to church for and I do enjoy church I just don't enjoy it as much as everyone else seems to seems to uh next one I have is Lara who is the Romanian foreign exchange student who's Alaska's friend friend Laura Laura has a very small small parts in these ones. I actually really liked her. I really wish there was more scenes of Laura. Laura, that's the only thing about, bad thing about Laura that I would complain about is that she didn't have enough scenes in this book because I really enjoyed her character. Her character in this. I hated Miles so much for stringing her along whenever he knew he was in love with Alaska. Alaska, and she actually says the perfect line about it in this book, which I also love. It's actually one of my favorite scenes when we get to my favorite scene section. Section, and that's some, like, what Laura said to Miles. It is so relatable to me because I've been in that situation where I had wished that a guy would have just not asked me out so we could still be friends. Friends, and it was just, it was perfect. And Tama Tamaki? Yeah. Tamaki. I think he was pretty funny, especially the whole I'm a fox scene with the fireworks and stuff, and I do appre I also appreciated the fact the fact that he wanted to help Miles and the Colonel find out what happened to Alaska. That was very awesome of him. Awesome. I, if I had to pick something I don't like about Tamaki, Tamaki is the fact that he kept what happened between him and Alaska a secret. Secret when they were trying to figure out what happened to Alaska. It was just, it was very frustrating. I mean, next we have the Colonel, which is probably one of my favorite characters in this book. He's funny. He's hilarious. He tells it ha how it is. He's not afraid to tell Miles to shut the fuck up every once in a while. A while and put him in his place. Like, one of my favorites is whenever he tells Miles, uh, you're not the only one who lost Alaska. Or was that Tomaki? I think they both did that at a point. At a point, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm. Uh, I had nothing I didn't like about. There was actually a lot I did not like about these characters. I One thing I really enjoy about these books are the characters, because the characters are really great in this book and really fleshed out. I didn't find a character that was one-dimensional besides that one group that I can't remember the name of at the moment. At the moment, uh, those people were one-dimensional, but they're like mini-side characters, so it's okay if they're one-dimensional characters. Characters. Now let's go on to the two biggest characters in this book. First up, going with Alaska, because she's the second main character in this book. Book. I actually found Alaska to be rather refreshing as a one of the main characters. She's a girl that doesn't believe in girl hate, for one. I loved how it's one of my favorite scenes when she shuts down girl hate. Girl hate with Sarah. It's just, it was one of my favorite scenes. It was so amazing. You feel like, yeah, shut down girl hate. Girl hate. Uh, I like how she's very open about her sexuality. Sexuality, like, hey, just because I've had sex doesn't mean I'm a whore. And I really like how they switch the golden virgin trope, because Miles is a virgin. He doesn't want to be a virgin, but he is one. Is one. And Alaska is not a virgin. And I don't. I can't tell you how refreshing it is to have a girl in YA fiction that's not a virgin, that's not, neither a lost her virginity 
to rather tragic means, or B, B has had sex with all kinds of guys, and basically she's a slut. <laughs> slut. I like representations of these kind of girls, because I was one of those girls. I was a girl that had sex before she was married. I'm a girl that doesn't put out to every guy, either. Either, like, if I had to tell you my sex count, it would have been four people. That's it. I don't go around throwing my vagina at everyone. Everyone. So it was refreshing when Alaska was a non-virgin that wasn't a slut. Slut. Thank you, John Green, for having Alaska one shut down girl hate and to be a non-virgin in YA fanfiction that's not a slut. Slut. Even though she did one horror, one thing I really didn't like her for, like her for, but that's more my morals than anything else. Anything else? It was just eh. Also, one thing about Alaska I didn't like, which isn't actually her fault, or about it was more the narrator of the story because I was listening to an audiobook. Alaska's voice was, was the only one that drove me crazy on the audiobook. And like, I don't know what it was. It was kind of like watching beautiful creatures again, and you know how they all had their southern accents, and some of them felt off. Well, that one felt off to me too. <laughs> too, but Alaska as a character, character, I really enjoyed her. I really love Alaska as a character. I think she's one of my favorite new characters besides Feyre in a Court of Thorns and Roses series. I I love Feyre. A lot, but Alaska, Alaska is definitely getting up there with main characters. Definitely got up there on my list. On my list for this year. And last but not least, uh, Miles. Miles, uh, let's get about the, uh, the thing that I hated about the most. Selfishness. Miles, uh, to me, was a very selfish person a lot of the time. A lot of the time, I felt like he didn't really listen a lot. Like how Alaska just wanted a strictly platonic relationship and he still mooned over. I get it. Crushes are inevitable. You can't help how you feel. But at the same time, she has a boyfriend. And there's tons of rather attractive girls besides Alaska. In this school. <laughs> in this school. And there's actually more I don't like about Miles, but that's more my things I didn't like section. Actually, another thing I didn't like about Miles was, was I'm trying to think. I think sometimes his humor fell flat, but that was a part of Miles being a very awkward person. Awkward person. But besides that, Miles was an okay character. He wasn't my favorite. My favorite, but he wasn't my least favorite either. Either. So that does it for the character section. Now I'm moving on to things I didn't like about the book. The book. There's a few things I didn't like about the first. First thing I didn't like about the book was the pacing. I found the pacing to be rather slow in this. In this at times. Times which when you're working you really want a more fast paced book. Like things that really get you interested so you could stay awake. Like most of the time. Time. Uh, number two was the cheating scene. I really don't appreciate the cheating scene. Cheating scene, because I really have a problem with morally gray cheating scenes, especially because they're playing truth or dare, and it's like, I dare you to make out with me. I'm mean, here, hook up with me, and I didn't like that part, because Alaska, for being so into her boyfriend, she would make up a dare to make out with Miles just to see how she felt. I didn't like that. Number three is how selfish Miles was at times, especially after the death of Alaska. Alaska, he didn't really care how other people felt. All he really cared about was finding out what happened to Alaska or how he felt about it. Felt bad, and it, it just really annoyed me. When he did that, did that because other people are grieving along with you. You're not just the only one who has grief, and it just it really rubbed me the wrong way. Number four is actually a more personal thing for me, and that was 
how I could never remember Miles' Miles name because he's either called Pudge or he's called Kid and he's almost never referred to by his actual name. And I know I'm not the only one who thinks this way because there has been a lot of comments in the comment section of the video I'm watching saying saying what was Miles' real name? What was that? The main protagonist's real name? Pudges? Pudges, yeah, it, it's just eh. Another thing, okay. The way Miles treated Lara, especially after Alaska died, it's kind of like, oh, Alaska's not here to make jealous anymore, so let me dummy. I, I get that he was grieving for Alaska, but he didn't really have shit. Lara out because she was grieving too and she's known Alaska longer than Miles knew Alaska and it was just it was really just a tacky thing to do I liked her roommate when she kicked him in the nuts that was a scene I forgot to mention mentioned in my favorite scenes I liked that like that like the whole Lara going I forgive you and then her roommate going I don't fuck you and kicking him in the balls no I forgive you that was an amazing scene I liked that Like that. Um. Next one I hated was Alaska's funeral. I feel like the funeral scene was just so rushed. Rushed in this book. I didn't. I wanted to know more about how Alaska's dad felt and how Josh felt. Josh felt. I wanted to know more about these things, and the funeral was just so rushed. Rushed and it was just ah. Uh. Okay, and then another. These two actually go hand in hand. The last two was how predictable the story could be at times, especially when Alaska dies. Like as soon as Alaska gets a phone call saying she needs to go and she's drunk, I could tell instantly that she was going to die in, or at least get in a really bad car crash. I predicted that mostly because I'm all like, oh my god, is Alaska going to die in a car crash because she is driving drunk? Is this what the other half of the book is about? And I was totally right about that. Same as Miles writing his final essay about... Alaska, and then the prank, well, I didn't predict the final prank, I did predict that there was going to be one in Alaska's honor. Honor, no, away from negativity, let's go to the more positive things I loved about this book. Book was one, Alaska shutting down girl hate. I hate when there's girl hate in books, in books, and it was refreshing to see a girl that just automatically shuts down the girl hate, like... Girl, you don't even know me. No, you don't talk to me, me that way. I don't see why girls have to do that. Do that. It's like, thank God, John Green, for questioning why girls hate on each other. Because I really don't get it. Yeah, look. Uh, I wrote down yay for platonic ships because Alaska and Miles, while Miles was more of a unrequited love, Type deal. Alaska's part was strictly platonic until the true for dare scene, which I really didn't like. Like, I, I, I like, it's refreshing to see a strictly platonic relationship in YA, because it's always, the two main characters just have to get together. Together, and there's not a lot of platonic relationships in YA fiction. Fiction, which is why this is really up my alley, because I love... Romantic relationships, but I also love platonic relationships. Like, I really wish that Katniss and Peeta had stayed a platonic relationship, because they just don't work. Work out as a couple at all. Sorry, all the Peeta and Katniss shippers. I do not ship that. Uh, like I said, um, yay to girls that actually have actually lost their virginity. Virginity in a way that wasn't assault or just being a slut. A slut. I liked that. Liked it. Um. Oh, yeah. Another thing I liked about this book was how it 
handles the different processes of grieving. Of grieving. There was a lot of different processes of grieving here. There was a denial process of grieving. There was the ex acceptance because you didn't really know the person type deal of grieving. And then there was the grieving that Alaska did for her mother. The grieving that just never really goes away no matter how much you try because it's the guilty type of grieving. And I like how they did the did that. Another small thing I like about looking for Alaska was the famous last words. I like the fact that Miles knows about famous last words. It's actually pretty interesting. Interesting. Uh, I also like how it incorporates incorporates religion without being too in your face about it. About like I loved that religion class. If I had a religion class like that, I would actually like religion class. I guess. Uh, another thing is the best day, worst day game. Even though we had this really sad story of Alaska and how her mom died. Her mom died from aneurysm. I liked the best day, worst day game. Game, that was a really real written scene. Uh, scene. Another thing I like about the, this book is the fact that it actually really made me cry. There is not a lot of books that made me cry, but as soon as I finished this book and I was processing this book, I just sobbed in tears because there's not a lot of books that made me cry, but that one really made me think. Think about that, and I just had to give a moment to cry, so yay for shedded tears. Tears, and last but not least about things I enjoyed about this book is that they didn't give away what actually happened to Alaska. Yes, we know how she crashed. We know the logistics of what happened to her. Happened to her. But we don't know if it was intentional or if it was accidental, which I appreciate. Because sometimes in life you don't know what really happens. There's no predicting life. I like how it's a metaphor of there's... We could plan our life as much as we want, but there's unpredictable things. Things that we just can't explain in this world. In this world, and there's nothing, not a lot of things we could explain by the book. And I like how it's a way of dealing with that also. Also, now on to my saddest scenes, because there are a few scenes that maybe shed tears. Tears, like, first off, Alaska's mom dying from the aneurysm when we find that out in the best day, worst day game, I was about to ball. Well, not as bad as when we found out Alaska was dead, but process. <laughs> process, that's definitely a process. Process. Uh, Alaska getting into the car garage, that's actually one thing I forgot to mention that I hated. I really hated the fact that no one out of the three people that saw her leave actually stopped her from getting into that car in the first place. Because I know a lot of people that would stop a person from getting into a car drunk. Drunk. But uh, Alaska getting into the car crash and then dying is also one I had to really process because, like Miles, I didn't want to believe that Alaska was dead. I... Wanted to believe it was a prank, but it was just so sudden how she died, and it just really processed that no matter how much we planned for the future, we could die at any moment, and it was just handled in a really beautiful way. way. And next sad scene that since it's on the subject is Miles dealing with the death of Alaska by trying to deny that she's dead at first. First, I thought that was a very realistic scene because in the stage of grief, there is a stage that's denial. Denial that they're actually dead, like there's no way in hell that this could possibly happen. happen. And he questions if Alaska's dead for a good hour or so. Like, I think it was 30 minutes to an hour or so. So, like, no, she couldn't really be dead. Dead, this girl that's so full of life, she couldn't possibly have died like this. Um, another thing that really overwhelmed me, not really made me cry per se, was trying to figure out what exactly happened to Alaska. That's a lot to take in. And in a 
course, you never know if it was intentional or accidental. Dental, but since I related to Alaska so much, so much in this book, it was really hard getting through those scenes. <clears throat> scenes. Another thing that uh, made me cry was that that why she got in the car crash was the fact that she forgot that it was her mother's death anniversary and that she died the day after her mother died. Dad, I thought that was a really sad scene. <clears throat> sad scene. And the saddest scene, I think, was Miles' essay at the end. That just made me cry because he was doing a real... A essay about religion. And then he started talking about Alaska during that. And it was just beautiful. One thing about John Green is that his writing is just a really beautiful writing <clears throat> style. And I really appreciate it. Now, last but not least, we have my favorite scenes. First off, we have Alaska and Miles' first meeting. I liked this scene. <clears throat> scene mostly because it was just such a humorous way to meet, especially whenever Alaska was telling someone the story about the guy who honked her boob. Boob, and I'm all like, oh my god. <laughs> it's like, people don't want to say that happens, but it does happen. So, yay, realistic meeting. Awkward meeting. Because not every meeting has to be romanticized. Sometimes people meet in awkward ways, and that's epic and awesome. Awesome, another one that I loved was the basketball game when Miles got a concussion. Concussion. I felt bad for Laura because he puked on her lap, and she's like, she handled that with such grace. I would have been pissed off to no end, but she's, she just looks down and goes, Goes, I'm gonna go change my clothes now. Now, and then, of course, uh, Tumaki is the one that gave Miles a concussion by shouting something, and then he's all like, run! And then, of course, uh, Miles is the one that ends up getting slammed in the head of basketball. <laughs> and then another one... Like I said, it was Alaska shutting down girl hate because there is this little snippet of a scene that we talk about where Sarah, who's basically, basically the colonel's off-again, on-again girlfriend, girlfriend is accusing the colonel of hooking up with Alaska and Alaska saying, Alaska and her boyfriend defending Alaska saying that she would never do that and how Alaska says she really... This really needs to stop, and I'm not putting up with this bullshit, because I don't believe that girls have to hate on each other. I, in fact, I hate them when girls hate on each other. Each other. How are we supposed to have a very feministic point of view if we're just at each other's throats? And I'm just all like, thank you. A girl who actually says it. Says that we could claim that every girl is equal, but there is still girl hate in this world. And it's a very real thing. <clears throat> Building. And, and the, of course, one of my favorite scenes is the best day, worst day game. Game, I liked that scene. It was sad, but I liked it. Um, Miles' denial that a lot, when we find out Alaska is dead, is also one of my favorite scenes because it's done so well. Like, you actually believe that this person is actually really, gr this fictional person is actually really grieving this person. This person, and I haven't seen a very realistic. Representation of grief ever since we I read Garden of Angels, which is actually one of my first books I've ever read. So I actually like the this book. Book. Another thing I like. Another one of my favorite scenes was the Colonel slash Chumaki telling Miles that he's not the only one that's grieving. That they were Alaska's friends too. Do any stop being selfish about it. I appreciate that scene because there are a lot of processes of grief and a lot of times it's lost on us. Other people are grieving too, so I like that representation of the grieving process too. Oh, can we just t take a second to appreciate the Tumaki and Miles shower scene? 
Cersei when they come out and Colonel's making fun of them for it. That was a good scene. I I liked that scene. Scene. Oh, one of um, my... And then, of course, the one scene that I just have to talk about is the blowjob scene. Because that was hilarious. I was rolling on the floor laughing at the blowjob scene. Because it was just... It was so awkward, but it's so accurate sometimes. Because... You know, sometimes a lot of people don't know how to give blowjobs. Blowjobs, it's not something you really pick up on your first try. First try, there's a lot of different techniques to blowjobs. But it was actually pretty hilarious. Hilarious and then how they actually have to... Alaska actually has to demonstrate how to do so. How to do so if I forgot what she demonstrated on how to do it with, but it was hilarious. It was just something that you would probably see in a middle school sexual education class that Alaska did, and it was it was funny. Funny and and then we have my two favorite scenes in the whole book, which was Laura because I've been in this these situations too. Where a lot of people think they have to date just because they have some sort of feelings. But there's different kinds of feelings in relationships. Relationships. And there are relationships that start out the base of, well, everyone says we should date. Maybe we should date. And that's how Laura and Miles basically got together. <laughs> together, too. Because Alaska was setting, hooking, trying to hook them up together. And one of my favorite scenes that Laura says, and she handles this with such grace, and Laura as a character is just so awesome with handling this type of situations. <laughs> situations, but she deadpan tells Miles after he comes by to tell her he's sorry for ignoring her and shit. <laughs> and she, she tells Miles that he didn't have to date her she would have been fine with them just staying friends. And I think that's actually a very important lesson to remember. That you don't have to be in romantic relationships with other people to enjoy their company. Enjoy their company. There are boy-girl relationships that could be strictly platonic. Platonic. And I appreciate the fact that they bring that up in this book. In this book, and that you don't have to date someone just because people tell you to date. And of course, uh, the go, the two, these two go hand in hand, and that's the goodbye to Alaska scenes. <laughs> scenes, especially with them cruising the car down their crash, her crash site. That made me cry a little bit. And then, of course, John Green just has to slam it in me the last two minutes of the page. With Miles's essay about Alaska, and it was just, it was such a powerful book. And my final thoughts on it were, are everyone should read this, and this book shouldn't be banned in school because there's so much to take away from this book, and it's not just about sex, and teen, underage teenage smoking and drugs, drug use and drinking. It's so much more than just that. It's a powerful novel, and I really wish there was more novels around like this. Yes, but there you guys have it. That was my spoiler review of Looking for Alaska. I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you later in my next video. Bye!